Hi, so uh, I'm the author of Conjure, and Conjure is a uh, NeoVim Lisp development toolkit that allows you to uh, interactively work with many different languages. Um, one of those languages uh, is the, the main one, Clojure, and it recently got support for uh, debuggers. So you can actually debug a Clojure program while connected to it over a REPL uh, using this CIDR and REPL debugger middleware. Uh, this is actually going to be superseded at some point by uh, Clojure DAP, which is something that I'm yet to write, but will allow you to use uh, debug adapter protocol UIs for your editor uh, to be able to debug Clojure code over an MREPL. Um, this means that you can use any editor, any REPL tooling, whatever you want, uh, but it will play nicely with Conjure. So it's separate to Conjure, but will complement it nicely. And this will really replace the debugger support in, inside Conjure. Um, which is why the debugger support in Conjure is so rough and simple, um, because it just seems like a waste of time to implement so much of that and then replace it with something so much better that is a lot easier to do. But in this video, um, I'm going to quickly show you how to set a breakpoint and actually uh, step into your code, change a value, inspect some values and get out. So I'm not going to exhaustively go across everything because I don't fully understand the CIDR debugger protocol either, um, but I'm going to show you the important parts that should be enough to keep you going. Uh, and something that I only realized recently that is uh, very key is, I've recommended this in the past, this debug key. What this hash debug does is sets a breakpoint all the way through your code. So it doesn't just set one breakpoint. It doesn't just set a breakpoint at the point that you type it. It sets it at this layer, it sets it on the plus, it sets it on the A, and it sets it on the B. So it sets it on every single symbol, every single form, all the way down the tree recursively, um, as I understand it. The different one you can use is just hash break. So we're going to use break in the examples because it's a lot simpler. It only sets one breakpoint, uh, and it, you can inspect that single value. I feel like it's a bit more predictable and a bit more intuitive, um, especially with um, Conjure's, uh, shall we say, simple UI. So you can actually go to this wiki page here. So if you go to the Conjure repo, you go to wiki um, and you go to Clojure and Ripple Cider Debugger. Uh, you can see all this information and you can also see a link to the Clojure DAP repo, which is under development. And we're actually going to connect to that uh, now. So we're actually going to connect to it and we're going to debug it, even though it's just a hello world still right now. So over in my editor <coughs> to reset the log, we have a nREPL started. So inside the project, we have a development script that started a REPL with an nREPL port open. And I've opened my editor with Conjure installed. Um, and I'm going to connect that. I'm going to start a fresh one. So main.clj. And let's get the log open. And we want to connect to this port to restart this. There we go. So we're connected to our REPL. I can evaluate code. Excellent. So we have a run function here uh, that is very, very simple. Uh, all it does is says hello. It takes some options. Um, we can run it down here. So as an example, let's execute that. We can see that it's printed uh, the options. So pprint opts. The opts we gave it were x of 10. Um, and it also printed hello Twitch and YouTube uh, with a x coming out of the ops. So it pulled the X out. Now what we're going to do is step into this point and replace the number. So we're still going to pass in X of 10. We're still going to have the code that says X of 10 or X of ops, which will be 10. Um, but we're going to replace it with another number. So before we do that, we've got to initialize the debugger with Conjure CLJ debug in it. Uh, you will probably want to set this kind of thing to a mapping. Uh, or automatically run it on when you open a file if you're using this off like quite often. I'm not using it too often, so I didn't bother to put all these behind mappings, but you might want to do that yourself. So let's run that command. I'm just going to copy it just a bit quicker. So conjure clj debug init. Execute that. We've initialized the side of debugger. So everything at the moment is still the same. Like I can evaluate stuff. Nothing's different. But what I can do is go in here and put break reload the code. So I just reloaded that function and go and run it again. And everything pauses. So the first line runs, we get pprint opts, and we see the opts. So x10. 
cool we knew that that's not surprising uh, let's print the locals and we do that by running conjure clj debug input which you can see here it says that we respond with uh, this command and some input and the inputs we can give it right now are here and these vary over time but it's going to tell you what you can give it uh, each step so let's uh, print the locals and our locals are opts with x10 in it again we knew this but if you were writing a more complex function if you had like a few hundred local variables and they changed all the time and there was an argument coming in from something else and some state from somewhere else this would actually give you a really good view of like exactly the state of your system without having to put print lines or anything in so we can see our ops let's replace this value so at the moment this would uh, respond with 10 if we evaluate this code let's replace it with 20. i'm going to do that with inject so we run input inject and it says expression to inject so what do we want to put in this place let's do 20 and it finished the rest of the code so it continued from that point onwards um, and replaced it with 20. so it ended up printing x10 then 20. Um, and now i'm not using debug here because uh, if we use debug it's as if the equivalent is this Oh, no, hang on, there we go. So when you use debug, it's as if you wrote this, which could be useful. Um, I think it's more useful when you're inside <clears throat> CIDR in Emacs. Um, so I think when you're using a UI that will actually kind of move the cursor, highlight things, point out exactly where you are, I think that's more valuable because you'll actually see, oh, I'm here and all these things have been instrumented. Okay, I can see that. Conjure doesn't give you that information um because like i said i'm going to be implementing something else that supersedes this so i think you should just stick to using break don't use debug um and just put a breakpoint on the exact point that you're interested in you can still inspect the locals you can still replace things um but you should keep it simple if you use debug it's doing more than you realize and that's going to get quite confusing because you have to step in and out of the forms um so yeah i i don't think that's worth it right now i think break is good enough so that's all there is to it at the moment, really. There's not much else to show. That's how you pause your program, inspect values, and change them on the fly. It's not all of the features. It's like nothing in comparison to CIDR's UI, so in the Emacs version. It's not an IDE, but those features will come when uh, Closure DAP is done, and we have uh, MVIM DAP UI support. So when this repo is done, we're going to drop all of the support uh, that I just showed you, uh, and we're actually going to be able to use stuff like this instead. Doesn't that look so much better? Like, it, I couldn't implement all this alongside all of my other work. I don't have the time for that. So I'm going to implement the thing that allows you to use this with Clojure, uh, which should be a lot less work and should work very nicely. Um, so yeah, that's all for this video. Uh, just a quick demonstration of um, running the Clojure debugger inside Conjure. Um, come and check it out. Uh, if you're already using Kanja, then maybe you didn't know this feature existed and it might save you a lot of work at work, I hope. Have a good day.